In this lesson, 12.1, we're going to talk about right triangle trigonometry. You probably learned about this in your geometry class, but we're going to do a little bit of review here. So when we talk about right triangle trigonometry, we're working with uh, right triangles, which means that they have a right angle symbolized by this square here, this representing these two sides are perpendicular. And what you do is you position yourself at the particular angle that you're working with, and you think of the side that's across as the opposite side the one that's next to the angle, but not across from the right angle, we call that the adjacent side. And the one that's diagonally across from the right angle, we call the hypotenuse, that's the longest side. So we're working with these trigonometric functions, and basically what they are are the ratios of two sides in a right triangle. So for example, uh, when you want to find the sine of an angle, you take the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And uh, there's an acronym that students you know, learn when they learn sine, cosine, and tangent. It's this one here. It's so ka toa and basically it just helps you remember you know sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse the cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse the tangent is the opposite side over the adjacent side so if you can remember this acronym so ka toa and just remember that it's the second letter divided by the third letter you'll be able to remember those trigonometric ratios and the other three things that you want to uh, memorize are the cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So these are the reciprocal uh, functions of sine, cosine, and tangent. The trouble that students oftentimes have is remembering which one goes with which one. So the, just remember the sine and the cosecant are reciprocals. So the cosecant is the hypotenuse over the opposite. The sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So they're just, they're just flipped. The cosine and the secant are reciprocals of one another, and the tangent and the cotangent. So the ones that students usually make a mistake on are the uh, cosecant and the secant, because they sound very similar. But uh, if you can remember one of the pairings, then you'll automatically know the other one. So let's uh, get into just an introductory example to show you kind of how to work with this. Say, for example, we have a right triangle here in letter A, and we want to find the sine of this uh, angle theta. Now, theta is just a Greek letter. They use uh, Greek letters when they're talking about angles, like alpha, beta, gamma you know, et cetera. So when we talk about sine of theta, we're talking about this angle here. We're gonna position ourselves at that angle. The sine, remember, is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So the opposite is one across. That's gonna be three over the one across from the right angle. That's the hypotenuse. So the sine of theta here is gonna be three fifths. Now, if we wanna find the cosecant of theta, all we have to do is just take the reciprocal of what we got for the sine of theta, and it's gonna be five thirds. How about the cosine of theta? The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now remember, adjacent is next to, but not the hypotenuse. See, there's two sides that are next to this angle. You want this one, not the hypotenuse. So 4 over 5 is the cosine. Secant is just the reciprocal, so 5 over 4. The tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be 3 over 4. And then the cotangent is just going to be the reciprocal, 4 over 3. Now, want to learn Algebra 2? Check out my Learn Algebra 2 video course for sale where we go through 85 video lessons that take you step by step by step through Algebra 2. We go through the important formulas, concepts, as well as numerous examples to help you master Algebra 2. Click the interactive card or the link in the description below to go over and check out some of the free lessons. Otherwise, let's get back into this current lesson. 4 over 3. Now, when we talk about right triangles, there's a couple of special right triangles that are uh, they come up over and over again, and we're going to be talking about them more in this chapter, and that's your uh, 30, 60, 90 triangle and your 45, 45, 90 triangle. So again, you probably learned this in geometry, but just to review, uh, the ratios that you want to remember, uh, or the relationships, I should say, between the, the sides are like this. The one that's across from the 30 degree angle, that's going to be the shortest side. It's kind of like if you have a small angle, you can see that's opened up just a little bit. The side across from that smaller angle, that's going to be the shortest side. So we call that side X. The one across from the 60 degree angle, that side is x times the square root of 3. So whatever the short leg is, you multiply that by square root of 3 to get the longer leg. Now keep in mind, square root of 3 is about 1.7. So it's about 1.7 times longer. And then the one that's across from the right angle, that side is 2 times x, so it's double that shortest leg. So basically, when they give you a 30, 60, 90 triangle like this, it's really easy. You just say, well, if I have the hypotenuse, I divide by 2 to get the short leg, and then I multiply by square root of 3. If I have the longer leg, I divide by the square root of 3 to get the short leg, and then I double to get the 
hypotenuse. Now the other special right triangle is the 45, 45, 90 special right triangle. What's interesting is because these two angles are the same, the two sides that are across from those angles are also the same, it's an isosceles triangle, right? So uh, we call these two legs X, okay? And the one that's across from the hypotenuse, uh, I'm sorry, from the right angle, the hypotenuse, that's x times the square root of two. Square root of two, by the way, is about 1.4. So this diagonal here is gonna be about 1.4 times longer than either of these two legs. If they give you the hypotenuse, you just have to divide by the square root of two to get back to one of the legs. Okay, so let's look at some examples regarding those, some introductory examples. If we wanna find the sine of 30 degrees, what we do is we position ourselves over here at this 30 degree angle. Remember, sine is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, so that'd be x over 2x. So let's go ahead and write that down. And you can see that x is like 1x. These x's actually cancel out and we get 1 half. So that's what the value of sine of 30 degrees is. Now what's interesting also uh, just to mention here is that you see how I've drawn this 30, 60, 90 triangle? This is a fairly small triangle, but imagine if I was to draw this you know, gigantic triangle uh, that was a right triangle and had a 30 degree angle. The sine of that enormous triangle, the ratio of the opposite side and the hypotenuse would still be one half. And that's the power of trigonometry is that if you know these ratios, you can apply them to any type of triangle with those same angle measures, okay? So let's see if we can uh, jump into example uh, C here. We've got cosine of 45 degrees. 45 degrees, remember cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, see adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So that's gonna be x divided by x squared of two. X is like one x, the x is cancel, we get one over square root of two. We don't really want that square root in the denominator, so I'm gonna rationalize by multiplying the top and bottom by square root of two. That gives us square root of two over square root of four, which square root of four is just two. So that's an exact value for cosine of 45 degrees. We're gonna be using these values as we go through this chapter. So. Let's look at uh, example D and E here. So here we wanna find out what's the missing side length here, okay? So what we need to do is we need to figure out, well, you know, what trig function ties together this angle, this side, and this side? So we position ourselves at the angle. We say they're giving us the adjacent side next to and the hypotenuse. Okay, so adjacent hypotenuse, that's cosine. So we've got cosine of 50 degrees equals adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, which is 12. So now all we have to do to get x by itself, this missing side length, is to do the opposite of dividing by 12, multiply both sides by 12, those cancel, and you've got 12 times the cosine of 50. Okay, I wanted to show you on the calculator where some of these uh, trig functions are. You can see on the TI-84, they're right here in the middle, it's a sine, cosine, and tangent. And notice right above them, you see the sine minus one, cosine minus one. These are the inverse trig functions. We're gonna use those in a future lesson here to, to solve for the missing angle. But for right now, we're gonna be using sine, cosine, and tangent. One thing you wanna be careful of before you use these um, is to go to your mode here. See this uh, mode? And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you've selected degrees, okay? So if it's on radians, just go over to degrees, press enter in the lower right-hand corner, and then press second, quit. That takes you back to the home screen here. So in the last uh, example, we were working with uh, 12, 12 times a cosine of 50 degrees. So let's see what that comes out to, 7.7. 7. So this gives you, you know, you know, the answer here, we just round it a little bit to the, uh, to the 10th, but you can round it to the 100th, et cetera. So that's how you uh, calculate it on your calculator. Again, just make sure you're in degrees and, uh, and you got it. Okay, hey, great, so let's uh, look at example E now. So here we can do this one uh, two different ways. One, we could either use the special right triangle, the 30, 60, 90 triangle, or we can use our calculator and use the sine, cosine, tangent functions. Let's go ahead and use the special right triangle first. So you can see that they're giving us angle 30 degrees. They're giving us the hypotenuse, which is our two X side. If we divide by two, that means that X is gonna be five. And if we wanna find the longer leg, we just have to multiply by the square root of three, so that means that y equals five square root of three. Now, the nice thing about square root of three here is this is like an exact answer. If we do it on the calculator, we're gonna get like an approximate value, we'd have to round it. So the other way to do it is, let's say I wanted to solve for x here, I would say sine of 30 degrees, so that's where we are right here at this angle, okay? And we've got the opposite side, which is x, just pretend we don't know that for a moment, over the hypotenuse, which is 10. So all we would have to do is multiply both sides by 10, and you've got 10 times the sine of 30. Do that on your calculator, and you'll get five. So that's how you would work with it, either using the special right triangle or doing the sine, cosine, tangent, using those trig functions. 
Okay, let's look at uh, letter F. Same thing here. This is a special right triangle, 45, 45, 90 triangle. It looks like they're giving us one of the legs. Okay, that, that's the side that makes up the right angle here. Okay, these two sides are the legs. So if this side's seven, that means that Y is also seven. If we wanna get the hypotenuse, we just have to multiply by the square root of two. See, X squared of two. So that means that uh, X is gonna equal seven square root of two. Now you can also do this using the uh, trig functions. You could say uh, sine of 45 equals opposite over hypotenuse. So let's write that down. Sine of 45 equals opposite over hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by X. We wanna get X by itself, so I'm gonna divide both sides by sine of 45. And so you can see x is going to be 7 divided by the sine of 45. You can do that in your calculator, and it'll give you, you know, the approximate value of, uh, of the hypotenuse here. So that's how you would work with it either way, either using the special right triangles or the trig functions. Last introductory example I want to show you before we jump into some problems you can work on your own is what we call the angle of elevation and the angle of depression. So when we talk about angle of elevation, you can think of like you're elevating, you're looking up, okay, and that line of sight, so that angle is in between the horizontal, okay, and the, your line of sight like that. Now, angle of depression, you're looking down from the horizontal, okay? So in this case, when you do these problems with angle elevation, angle depression, you can always think of it as a rectangle. You've got your diagonal of your rectangle. Elevation is up from the horizontal. Angle of depression is down from the horizontal. Notice that these two angles are actually gonna be congruent because they're alternate interior angles. This is something you learn in geometry. So if this is 40, this would also be 40. If this is the height, this is also the same height. If this is 100, this is 100. This is a rectangle, right? But in this case, let's say we wanna solve for the height of this tree. We don't necessarily wanna climb the tree. That could be dangerous, right? So we're gonna use our trigonometry. We say, well, hmm, what trig function ties together the opposite side and the adjacent side? Well, you can see opposite and adjacent, that's tangent. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that tangent of 40 degrees is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So the opposite side is H. The adjacent side is the one next to the angle, 100. Now all we have to do is multiply both sides by 100. Those cancel, and if we calculate that out, let's see, we've got 100 times the tangent of 40, which comes out to 83.9. So that's approximately the, the height of the pine tree here that I drew. So let me erase the whiteboard. I've got some examples that you can practice on your own to get more experience with uh, the right triangle trigonometry and these sine cosine tangent ratios. And uh, let's do that next. Okay, here's your opportunity to practice. So go ahead and pause the video, see if you can do some of these problems on your own and we'll go through them together. So the first one, you can see we're given this right triangle here and we wanna find the sine cosine tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And here's your angle theta. So how would you calculate those trig values? Well, if I was gonna do it, I would position myself over here at the angle that we're interested in, theta, and we've got the sine of theta, which remember is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Remember, so opposite over hypotenuse. So that's gonna be opposite is 12, and the hypotenuse is the one across from the right angle, that's gonna be 13. If we wanna find the cosecant, we just take the reciprocal, it's 13 over 12. Now the cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, so that's gonna be five over 13. The secant is just gonna be the reciprocal. And the tangent is gonna be the opposite over the adjacent, so that's 12 over five. Cotangent would be the reciprocal, five over 12, and you got it. So let's go to number two now. How would you do this one? The cosecant of 30 degrees. Now, by the way, cosecant, these are just abbreviation, abbreviations. Cosecant is actually C-O-S-E-C-A-N-T. Uh, but we abbreviate it CSC. So the cosecant of 30 degrees now is what? So we're going to look at our uh, special right triangle here, 30, 60, 90. Remember, the cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine. So sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosecant is going to be the hypotenuse over the opposite. So you can see we have 2x over 1x. The x's cancel, and we just get 2. Okay, how about number three, the secant of 45 degrees. So we go to our special right triangle, 45, 45, 90. How would you do that one, secant of 45? Well, remember, cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The secant is the reciprocal. It's the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So what we have is x square root of 2 over x. The x is canceled, so we just get square root of 2. Okay, how about number four? How would you do this one? So here we're solving for the missing side, x. What trig function ties together 20 degrees, x, and eight? How would you do that one? Well, if I was gonna do it, you can see that it's the opposite side 
and the hypotenuse side. Uh, so we've got the sine, because remember opposite over hypotenuse is our sine. So sine of 20 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. If we multiply both sides by eight, you can see x equals eight times the sine of 20, which I did this earlier for us. This comes out to about 2.74. Okay, number five, how would you do this one? Here you're solving for the missing side x here. We've got the angle 17 degrees. What trig function ties together 17 degrees, 15, and x? Well, if I was going to do this one, I can see that it's opposite and adjacent. So opposite and adjacent, that's tangent. So we say the uh, tangent of 17 degrees is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. Now what we can do here is we can multiply both sides by x. That way that cancels. And now we've got x tangent of 17 degrees equals 15. We want to get x by itself, so we're going to do the opposite of multiplying by tangent. Of 17, we're going to divide both sides by tangent of 17. And so x equals 15 divided by the tangent of 17, which comes out to about 49.1. And you got it. So great job. Review this uh, lesson if you need to. Add these formulas to your note sheet. And uh, if you need to review the lesson, otherwise I'll see you in the next one.